Brian Dorsey, Steven Anderson, and Tony Chiazza are officials, and we're underway with the Blue Jays controlling the opening tip. And Oregon starts man to man, but we will see that zone very soon. Trey Alexander, he is so dangerous in the mid-range, and right away he connects. He's become the primary ball handler for Creighton with Ryan Nemhard transferring to Gonzaga, and he is a terrific mid-range player. They had Kuznard on him, which is a good matchup. And our first foul as Kuznard was tripped up, and he grabs his left shoulder, which has been giving him problems. Suffered the injury in the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 tournament, and he's still holding on to his left shoulder you can see all the tape that he has played through it the other night with 40 points foul was on Shireman and one thing to keep an eye on I thought this was a great stat only two of 33 opponents this year shot one and ones in the first half against Creighton they don't foul Kuznar misses in tight Alexander a three and he's got five quick points. Well, they just lost in that time And his three-point shooting not as good this year as it was last year, but still capable Jackson Shellstead puts Oregon on the board the freshman from West Lynn, Oregon as far as pace goes one thing about Creighton They're one of the best. Oh, that's open three. That's forget. Oh great block that was Dante coming over and getting a piece of the Shireman shot. I'm a big and folly Dante fan from what I saw the other day about how he moves his feet. He ran out to get that shot. Shireman was wide open. The average is just under two blocks per game. Dante with seven to shoot. It's going to take it. And Shireman, an elite defensive rebounder. This matchup of these big guys is going to be big time. Paul Brenner, the three-time defensive player of the year in the Big East. Dante got a piece of that one as well, and Kuznard running the break. Kuznard coast to coast, no good, and Paul Brenner the rebound. Creighton wants to shoot threes in transition, as many as they can get. Alexander again. Was looking for a foul with Kuznard defending him, and Greg McDermott was looking for a call as well. Shellstead stops, pops, misses. Ashworth transition three. And Dana Holman says, let's slow it down. Let's set things up here just two and a half minutes in. I think that's a good idea because Creighton makes almost 11 threes a game. Drop coverage. Kuznard to Dante, and a foul is called. That's going to be on Kalkbrenner, his first. You're going to see Kalkbrenner plays inside the lane on pick and rolls. Oh, he's down now. So many injuries throughout his career as Dante comes to his feet. Missed 14 games this year after having knee surgery returning in mid-January. Look how Kalkbrenner is playing. He's in the middle of the lane in this drop coverage. Good defense by Alexander creating the steal. Alexander gets it back, fakes the three. Out to Ashworth. Kuznard retreats. Oh, Miller wide open and short. Kalkbrenner offensive board and the putback. And a foul is called. Right now, Creighton looks to be a little bit quicker as things are developing here than Oregon is. Creighton made its first two shots. They've missed their last four. So Kalkbrenner at the line for a Creighton team that has won four of its last five games. Only loss was the Big East quarters to Providence. Over to Evan Washburn.
Well, Andrew, you touched on it. Dana Altman and Greg McDermott, they go way back. They used to be rivals in the Missouri Valley when Altman was with Creighton and McDermott was with Northern Iowa. But now 14 years later, they're more family than foe. Altman's family, a lot of them still live in Omaha. They go to Greg McDermott's coaching luncheons. They bleed Blue Jay Blue, but obviously they're rooting for Oregon today. And Altman said this is going to be challenging, but it's about his players and advancing to the Sweet 16. Yeah, and Evan, there's a reason they do not schedule each other. They do not want to go head-to-head. -head, uh, travel. They are here as Alexander travels. Well, what a job that this man did. Bruce Rasmussen, the retired athletic director at Creighton. He hired both Dana Altman and Greg McDermott. Two coaches in 30 years. That's pretty good. He knocked them both out of the park. And, and two really good guys on top of it. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Ducks. Kuznard has his first bucket. This kid has taken a ton of free throws this year. You can see why. He gets to the basket, and he's very strong. And we have it now we're seeing the zone and you see how they point. Oh, they lost them. That was bad defense. Cole Brenner the follow. They're not matching up quickly enough. You know, Creighton's pushing the ball down and they're a little slow in picking up. And Dana Altman told us yesterday, we're not used to seeing teams attempt 29 threes a game, which is what Creighton does. No team in the Pac-12 plays like that. He said he was going to have to try to get that message across to his players because there's not familiarity with it. Yeah, he was talking about how most of the teams in the pack have a good big man, so it's a little different. He's wide open again. Alexander misses, though, and Shellstad with the rebound. A couple of open looks that the Blue Jays have not been able to knock down. They're one of seven from deep. See, Dante has to make Colt Brenner pay by staying that far back, by setting screens, and then Colt Brenner's not there to hedge the screen. And guys can get 15-foot jumpers at the elbow. Dante over Kalkbrenner. He's got a sweet touch. Ashworth will shoot a three. And Creighton way off to start this one. And a lot of open ones. Blue Jays one of eight from deep. Over five minutes gone by. Still have not had that first media timeout. Kuznard used some clock. Ducks have won five in a row, including the Pac-12 Tournament Championship against Colorado as Evans misfires. They clearly want to push this thing up and get down before they can set the zone up. Miller couldn't handle the pass, and Kuznard commits the foul. Today, North Carolina and NC State advancing to the Sweet 16. And Brennan Rigsby in now for Jermaine Kuznard, who has two fouls. Kuznard played 37 minutes on Thursday, did not commit a foul, already two in the first half today. And this matchup now becomes man-to-man -man defense, where they're doing a lot of switching. Well, they didn't switch. They messed up the switch there. Evans came on in the last second, and at his size, was able to bother that shot. Alexander has now missed his last four shots. You can watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device. With NCAA March Madness Live, download now to stay up to date on all the action. Dante and Kalkbrenner, that's the matchup, and Dante can't get this one. These two teams combined got two points off the bench the other night. Brennan Rigsby was the only guy coming off the bench to score. Neither one of these teams is very deep. Rigsby helps, Kalkbrenner misses. Tipped around to Alexander. So far, we're a combined 27% from the floor. Shireman knocks it down. He His also can put it on the floor and get into the mid-range area. First team all Big East. Francisco Farabello hops off the bench for Greg McDermott, set to check in. Shellstad, way too strong. Shireman for two, he missed it. Wow, way too easy by... You got to play transition defense against Creighton. 
The question for Dana Altman is how long can he keep Kuznard on the bench with two fouls? And, and you know, Dante's tired. He's holding. Look at Dante. Yeah. Look how he's got his hands down on his knees. I mean, the pace of this game for them has been pretty quick. Tracy, no good. Dante cleans it up. Four points, five rebounds already for Dante. Only one field goal in the last three minutes and 45 seconds for the Blue Jays. Alexander came out hot, but not since then. I think they've gotten some great looks. No doubt. They're four of 15. Alexander has missed five. And I don't think it's from Oregon's. Sometimes it's from the other team's defense. I don't think this is. I think they're just missing. Tracy stops on the baseline and connects. Miller in the corner. Miller did hit three threes against Akron on Thursday. A 17-point Creighton victory. That was another great look. He was wide open. They're one of nine. They take 29 threes a game, which is the eighth most in the country. Shellstad, no good. Rebound Shireman. And Creighton will try to get it going on this end of the floor where they've missed their last eight three-point attempts. Hulkbrenner inside. Well, he's not going to miss. He shoots 63% for his career. I think there's some tired ducks out there right now. Other than Dante, who's going to step up for Oregon with Kuznard on the bench? Tracy. You think Shellstead? Right here. He is. He's got it. Good call, Lap. <laughs> Shellstad with five. Ashworth in the corner. High arcing rainbow three is cleared by Evans. And Dana does not like putting guys back in with two, two fouls. So it'll be interesting to see with this depth if he goes back to Kuznard at some point. Dante and Kalkbrenner. Dante, front of the rim. Midway through the first half. Neither team has really been able to get it going offensively so far. Shireman for three. And two ducks collide. It goes out of bounds. It'll be Creighton ball. They wanted to do. They're just not making any shots. The teams are combined 31% from the floor. And this is big news here. Kuznard sat for four and a half minutes. And Dana Altman is putting him back in with two fouls. I like him coming in with two fouls. He's an upperclassman. Shireman hits the three. Creighton had missed its last 10 three-pointers in a row until that bucket. Cario Oquendo has checked in for the Ducks. So has Mohamedou Diawara. That's Oquendo missing. And then Farabello races up ahead. Jason Green on the floor as well. Paul Brenner. And good defense there by Diawara. Kuznard. Off glass for two. All Pac-12 second team selection. Well, now they got matched up here. A lot of movement, though. I tell you, you know, Greg McDermott told us we got to just keep moving and make it so hard for them to match us up. Shireman left alone. Spins around and out, but tip right to Farabello. 15 to shoot, eight and a half in the first. Who's not doing a good job of fronting Kalkbrenner? Shot clock at five. Shireman puts it on the deck. Out to Alexander. Left alone for three. He hits. Well, Shireman did a great job of penetrating into the middle of that defense and finding Trey Alexander all alone.
had missed five in a row, Alexander, until that one. And Dante and Tracy right back on the floor. And Greg McDermott is going to put Isaac Trout out there as well. Kalkbrenner will get a breather with immediate timeout on the horizon. This is when he gets his uh, 22nd break. He played 38 minutes against Akron. Trey Alexander played 39 minutes. Shireman played 38 minutes. Dante, the finish. You know, Trout tried the three-quarter in that time. He should have just got behind. Yeah, Greg McDermott was not happy about that defensive set. Way too easy. Trout for three. Green, a rebound, and a foul is called against Oregon. 12-2, as we saw on the when they showed the stats. They got to get on the glass, no doubt. And what happens is sometimes when you play a zone, now they're playing man-to-man -man on this baseline OB. Sometimes when you play a zone and you're not matching up good, you give up rebounds. Oh, what a good screen. Shireman misfires from deep. Offensive rebound to Green. That's exactly what Dana Altman was just talking about with Evan. 14 points of their 21 second chance. Unbelievable. Dante with the answer at the other end. Look at Dana Altman. He's getting after his guys to play some defense and hit that glass. You know, they have so much movement, Creighton, that they make this matchup zone look like man-to-man. -man. Because you have to follow these guys around. Parabello from the outside. And a foul as Jason Green was going for the rebound. Oquendo fouls him. He was trying to box out and yep. do it, Dane Altman told him. First round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues on the ESPN Networks. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Offensive foul. A legal screen called against Jason Green. Creighton's bench did not score in the win over Akron on Thursday. It's the third time this year they've had no points from their bench, and they've won. All three games. These five starters so good. The only team in the country to have three players averaging 17 points per game. Kuznar three. It's good. And Oregon takes the lead. First lead of the night for the Ducks. He's been shooting it so well these last two games. But this, this team is hard to match up because of the way they move. Even though they really don't have to guard Jason Green outside. Colt Brenner gets it done. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tennessee and Texas coming right down to the wire on CBS right now. The winner of that game will take on the winner of this one in the Sweet 16. Dante bruising down low. And he misses. He likes going to that left shoulder. That time Colt Brenner took it away. Six rebounds for Kalkbrenner already. He averages seven and a half per game. This is straight man to man now by Oregon. Dante defending Kalkbrenner. Five on the shot clock. Kalkbrenner sees it at the other end of the floor. Now goes up and scores. With the shot clock expiring. Good move there. He dipped his left shoulder into Dante. Dante just seems a little tired. I mean, he's walking around with his hands on his hips. Just seems a little gassed. Ten points, six rebounds for Kalkbrenner. Shellstad triple. And Oregon continues to get hammered on the glass. A minus ten rebounding margin. Five minutes to go in the first. Farabello is open. Knocks it down. Well, they got no points off their bench the other day. Now they got five <laughs> already. 28-22. And Oregon is walking up the floor. A 7-0 run for the Blue Jays. Evans spinning in the paint. Oh, nearly traveled. 
Kuznard, catch and shoot, bang. And what a decision by Dana Altman. Putting Kuznard back in with the two fouls, he has been rewarded. Ten points for Kuznard. And a turnover by Creighton. Five first half turnovers for the Blue Jays. Kuznard was four for 18 from three coming into this NCAA tournament. He's played over five minutes in this half with two fouls. Kuznard, heat check, tough shot. Greg McDermott says, let's go, let's get down the court. They're tired. Kalk Brenner surveying the scene. Hands off Alexander. Great screen by Kalk Brenner. Alexander corner three. Kuznard sees he has numbers, so he's going to run it. Kuznard coast to coast. He is a killer finisher. His mom, Raven, in attendance. I mean, he's taking 167 free throws this year. Dana Altman was talking to the officials for a good amount of that timeout. Meanwhile, Tennessee just defeated Texas. So the winner of this game here in Pittsburgh will take on Tennessee in the Sweet 16. Since Kuznard came back in with the two fouls, he has scored 10 points in six and a half minutes. Shireman to Kalkbrenner! How about that out of the timeout for Greg McDermott? Yeah, I mean, that was way too easy. I mean, he was just standing on the basket by himself. Look at this guy. Wide open. Kuznard with 15. I think it's time for them to get to him. Kuznard has scored the last 11 points for the Ducks. Ashworth, through traffic. Dante's out on him. Who's got Kalkbrenner? Kuznard. Ashworth will shoot it. Another offensive rebound for the Blue Jays. Somebody's got to be open. It's Shireman. Wide open. Wow. Four for 20 in the first half from deep for Creighton. And I got to be honest with you, the 16 misses, they're pretty open. Greg McDermott told Evan Washburn they were great looks. I think Oregon has, a, they look a little tired to me. Tracy Runner gets the roll. And Dana Altman will call timeout with 1.46 to go. He's Both dead. these coaches are animated. Dusty May going to Michigan lap. How about that was that? a quick change. Yeah, Shireman from the corner. That's the second time out of a timeout. Greg McDermott has drawn up a beauty. Meanwhile, on this end of the floor for the Ducks, they started six for 18. Since then, they've made eight of their last 11. Tracy trying to keep the good times going, but it's off the mark. Dante, the offensive rebound. Dante lost it on the spin out of bounds to the Blue Jays. Two ties, four lead changes. Neither team is led by more than six. So one point game as we approach one minute to play in the first half. Ashworth comes to get it. His three on the way. Wide open. And their movement has been great. And Oregon has had all kinds of trouble trying to match it up. Really hard to match up against Creighton. Four guys out there that can shoot and they move. Creighton shot 59% from deep against Akron tonight. They are 22% from beyond the arc as Shellstad puts Oregon back in front. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about one of the best three-point shooting teams in the entire country. They shoot 37% on the year and make almost 11 a game. The shot clock is turned off, so Creighton can hold for the final shot. Oregon does have fouls to give if they choose. 
I don't know if they're going to do that with the limited bench they had, and they got all regulars in the game. Ashworth with four seconds left. It's good! Tracy does not get it off in time. Will not count. But Steven Ashworth finally hits a three. He had started 0 for 5. That was our sixth lead change in the last six minutes and 40 seconds. Yeah, he made a big one there. They went underneath. Shellstead went underneath that screen. You can't do that with any of these guys on crate. You got to go over the top. And Evans with Greg McDermott. Coach, you just heard you say about time to Ashworth. What has to happen in the second half to sustain this? Well, I asked him on the bench if he's ever going to make a shot tonight, and he said yes. Yeah. So, you know, we're getting really good looks, Evan, and that's how we play. You know, we're not blessed with a bunch of guys that touch the top of the square. We, we pass it and handle it and shoot it, and tonight we haven't shot it very well, and hopefully the last 20 minutes we can defend well enough and make some shots. What does the work on the glass say about your group when shots aren't falling? Jason Green was awesome off the bench. You know, he came up with three or four extra opportunities, and in that zone, the way they're spread out, it's hard for hard for them to get to us on the glass and call for and Jason in particular have had an impact in the game in that area appreciate you thank you Evan. we're trying to chase it down I also asked him lap you brought it up a couple times and folly Dante looking a bit fatigued he said yes fatigue is a concern especially with Dante his hope though is that Creighton gets fatigued too but they're built to play like this guys it's like a track meet with Creighton every time out. That's a great point, uh, Evan. They, this is how they play, you know what I mean? They're not doing anything that they don't do every single day for the whole year. They move, they, stay, they, they cut hard. Yeah, it's been a little tougher for Oregon playing against this style, no doubt. Kuznard has 15 points in the first half and a foul is called. That's gonna go on Shireman. This summer, the Targaryens, the Iron Throne, and the biggest show on TV are back. Season 2 of the HBO original series, House of the Dragon, premieres June 16th only on Max. Kuznard, corner, won't go. Dante, the offensive rebound, and he puts it in. I'll tell you, Kuznard did a great job of keeping that thing alive without a doubt, and that time, they get a second chance point, Oregon. And here's that zone. If you score, it's a lot easier to set up and get him matched up. Dante is one rebound shy of a double-double. And a turnover by the Blue Jays. That's their sixth. I tell you, this is as animated I've seen Greg McDermott. I agree. Guys, ever. It's a touch of the old Steve Lapis, if you will. <laughs> Well, he's not waving his arms and going crazy. <laughs> he's very, he's more stoic than I was. I agree with that, too. Kuznard, two more. He gets the offensive rebound the first possession. Dante scores. Now he scores there. I tell you, he's the heart and soul of this team, without a doubt. He scored 57 points this week. <laughs> Nearly another turnover. It is. Frustration for Greg McDermott. You can watch whip around coverage of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break presented by ET&T in the March Madness Live app. Download now. Shellstad, the freshman. Over to Evans with the shot clock at eight. Kalk Brenner comes over with the rejection. That's his 102nd block of the year. And he's got over 300 for his career now. 301 for Kalk Brenner, second all time at Creighton behind Benoit Benjamin's 411 blocks. Tony Chiazza having a word as everyone's jumbled up. With the shot clock at six. Kuznar trying to break free. He does. Over to Evans. Got to shoot it. Evans knocks Miller over. Offensive foul. Dana Altman not happy on the Oregon sideline. First foul for Evans. Well, that's not you. That's not the guy you want to see have the ball at the end of the shot clock. And this is definitely a charge. <laughs> That was just the fifth foul of the night. 
You see how they're passing and cutting through the middle of the lane, then out to the corner. Tough to match this up. But they're doing a better job. Ashworth, Oregon. way short. Kuznar may have gotten a piece of it. Dante up high. They really need to pick and roll with Dante a little bit with a Kalkbrenner playing way back. Shellstad off balance jumper, not there, and Kalkbrenner rips down his eighth rebound. Much better job in transition that time. Alexander creates separation, and he is so dangerous in that area. Ten points for Alexander. We asked. Greg McDermott about the mid-range game of Alexander. He said he's always been good, but he's taken it to another level this year, including the game-winning jumper at Villanova to close out the regular season. Shellstad misses, and Alexander is there. There's going to be a lot of shots at that elbow there off that screen, the way Kalkbrenner plays defense. Showerman baseline, tries to squeeze one to Kalkbrenner. Stolen away by Shellstad. Tracy. Shireman out to Alexander Miller for three. Wow. And Kuznar will dribble it down. How about the Creighton turnover, Steve? Five in the first half. Already three this half. And this is what we talked about coming out of the half. 90 this week for Kuznar and Dante. 35 the rest of the team. Shellstad, 16 footer, is short. Struggling. This is reminiscent of how the first half started yeah. with neither team making a shot. There's one. Alexander with the triple. On this end, the Ducks are over their last five, and a foul is called on Trey Alexander. For Creighton to be seven for 26 from the three point line, 26 of their 41 shots have been threes. Usually 50% of their shots are threes. They're really letting them go, but not making them tonight. Oregon trying to end a scoreless drought. Who do they go to but Kuznar? You know, he is so good because he can score in the lane. He scores from the three-point line. He is really good player. They screen the top of the zone, and Trey Alexander had almost a layup there. Dante working on Kalkbrenner wins that matchup and the Ducks regain the lead. Well, that time Kalkbrenner let him catch it really too deep. A double double for Dante 12 points, 10 rebounds. I tell you, they have been so, I've been watching the movement, they've been so hard to match up. And Dane Altman sticking with this matchup zone as hard as it's been. Dante makes a great defensive play. Pac-12 has gone 6-1 at the NCAA tournament. The lone loss was today with Washington State as Kuznar hits another. There's where they have to tack that elbow because if they're going to go drop coverage on that screen, Kaufman is not there to hedge it. You're going to get that 12-foot, 13-foot shot. A 6-0 run. For the Ducks. Ashworth with five to shoot. He'll take it. And knock it down. Second triple for Steven Ashworth. And we're tied at 44. Kuznard again. This time short. Follows his shot. And he draws the foul. Great hustle by Jermaine Kuznar. Let's take a look at what happened on that shot that Kuznar made from 12, 13 feet. You look at Kalkbrenner. He's running drop coverage. So on this screen here, there's nobody to help. So if you just set that screen with Dante and Kalkbrenner's way back, you're going to end up with this 14-foot jump shot. He almost had another one just now that he missed. So Kuznar can continue to attack off that pick and roll at the elbows. And lab, but Baylor Shireman just picked up his third foul as Tracy elevates and Kalkbrenner defends. 
And it's Creighton basketball, but Showerman staying on the floor with three. Yeah, boy, they, they haven't had a guy foul out in 52 games. They've gone 52 straight games without a guy fouling out. And to that end, the Ducks have still not attempted a free throw tonight. And that was a great sportsmanship there between Dante and Stephen Ashworth. Dante threw that ball off Stephen Ashworth's face and went up to say, hey, you okay? Farabello rejected by Kuznard. You can get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. And Oregon goes man to man under the basket. With 12 on the shot clock as Ashworth tumbles to the ground. During the last media timeout, Greg McDermott was really hot with the officials. Alexander, no, and Dante with a good box out. There it is again. Kuznard to Dante. Oh, what a catch. And he finishes. What a catch. Wow. It's nice to have a set a nine foot five standing reach. That doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. They got him matched up pretty good on this possession. Shireman only eight points. Can he add to his total? Yes, he can. Tell you what, this is about as hard an offense to play a matchup zone against than you're ever going to see. And I know about it because I used to work for Coach Massimino, who was a matchup zone genius. But there wasn't movement like this back in those days. Oregon has 12 points this half, all by Dante and Kuznar. Here's Kuznar. Oh, a turnover. How about the catch by Dante? Yeah, I mean, you saw the, what you would call the long arm of the law up there catching that ball. Whoa. Well, with this zone that Oregon is playing as Shireman hit the three, Dana Altman said it. he really, the origins were his first year when he was the Creighton coach. He said they weren't any good. They couldn't compete in the Missouri Valley. They had to throw a curveball at opponents. So he went to this zone, and now he's playing a lot of it because the Ducks only have eight healthy scholarship players. The first two times she's seen him play were in round one, and today he's got 61 points. I talked to Jermaine, and he lived with his grandmother. As Shireman knocks down another bucket from fourth grade to senior year. He talks to her after every game. She has been incredibly important. He fell in love with basketball in the community that she lived in in East Chicago, and it's meant the world to him to have her here again. First time she's seen him play in person as a college basketball player. And she doesn't like to fly, so Oregon doesn't get close to Indiana very often. She was able to make the drive to watch him this week after Shireman hit a tough shot. That out-of-bounds play was unbelievable. This was tremendous execution. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Kuznard for three. It's good. And Grandma loves it. You know, you cannot go on the screens with him anymore. Forget about what he shot during the year. It doesn't matter. And we have a foul against the Ducks. How about the inbounds play you were talking about, Lap? That was a great... Watch the movement here. Watch Shireman. He makes like he's going to screen, and Ashworth is going to come off. And then he curls back out with a little bit of a hip check from Kalkbrenner. And that's why he's able to make it. Ashworth high off the glass for two. We've seen close to 75 minutes of basketball tonight. Oakland, NC State, and now Oregon, Creighton. Neither team of the four has had a double-digit lead. It's been tight the whole night in Pittsburgh. That's the way we like it. <laughs> we do. Shellstad's been very quiet here in the second half. Shot clock down to five. It's in Kuznard's hands. On the attack. Over. Kalkbrenner. No. Dante helps him out. You see how Kuznard demanded the ball there? He demanded the ball because at the end of the shot clock, that's who's got to have it. Drive. <laughs> I'm getting there. 
You've been sold it this hard since you got Kerry Kittles to come to Villanova. No, that was the best sell job I ever did. Nah, kudos to you on that. Creighton's threes. They started one for 11. Since then, they're nine for their last 18. Yeah, it's funny how those numbers now are moving up to 35%. Uh, now it's getting like it's uh, more than decent. Alexander with four to shoot. Off balance shot, gets his own miss. Out to Ashworth for three. And Kuznar gets the rebound, his sixth. Really good look there for Ashworth. This half, Kuznard and Dante have 17 points. They're 8 of 12. The rest of the Ducks, 0 for 6. Yeah, obviously not getting anything anywhere. You would think Shellstad would be a guy that could do something. And Kuznard, I mean, this guy, he doesn't get tired either. Kuznard, Dante, 3 to shoot. Dante, Kochbrenner the board. Rigsby on Ashworth, and Creighton will reset. Trying to get to the Sweet 16 for the third time in four seasons. They would play Tennessee. Shireman drives, missed wow. it. I don't see him miss many of those. Great curl into the lane, too. Kuznard attacking the other way, and a foul is called against Farabello. At Kuznard, all he knows how to do, I'll tell you, that's close. Yeah, close. And Kuznard has two fouls. Yeah, that's very close. Could have easily been his third. Uh, could have been a charge. He's obviously Greg McDermott. And now Dana Altman is saying that it should have been two free throws. They were, it was a shooting foul, but they're saying it was on the floor. I think it was on the floor. Another look. I mean, it happens there, it's on the floor. Yeah. Oregon still has not shot a free throw tonight. Dante muscling his way with Cochran oh, right left hand. Whoa. And Greg McDermott is saying that's got to be something. And then a turnover by the Blue Jays. Sloppy inbounding the ball. Dante's gotten the best of Cochran this half. So the ball goes right back to the Ducks. Fifth turnover of the half for Creighton. They have 10 tonight. They average 10 per game. Kalkbrenner has not scored this half. This time Kalkbrenner comes up, but look what happens. Shireman on Dante, and Shireman takes it away. Wow, they did a good job. They changed up their coverage that time. Kalkbrenner came out to hedge the screen. Farabello looking for help and sends it over to Alexander. Approaching eight minutes to play. Alexander inside. He loves that spot. Won't go. Green, the offensive rebound, but he misses the putback. And Dana Altman is furious again that his team allowed an offensive rebound. Get the ball. You got Dana say, get the ball. 13 offensive rebounds tonight for the Blue Jays. Paul Brennan not running drop coverage now. And Kuznard is fouled by Alexander with six on the shot clock. And then a few words. And things are heating up. Last week on Sunday at the Players, Lashley was paired with Scotty Scheffler. So he had a pretty good seat. Nick McDermott to see Scheffler win the Players. Kuznard misses. Paul Brennan the rebound. Kalkbrenner still yet to attempt a shot here in the second half. Carabello slips. And Greg McDermott was trying to call a timeout instead of tie up is called. And it's Blue Jays basketball. He can't call timeout from the bench. <laughs> yeah. Joe he tried. <laughs> he did. <laughs> What's <laughs> the
Barabello was also trying to call timeout. Shot clock is at 10. Shireman will inbound. Paul Brenner setting the screen. Alexander uses it. Now four to shoot. Alexander, and before the shot, a foul against the Ducks. Head to Bleacher Report for the latest episodes. Of Rigsby commits his second foul. Only the, the half. Only the third foul for Oregon. Marabello thought about a deep three. Ashworth's open. Ashworth doesn't take it. Now four to shoot. Shellstad trips. Kalkbrenner misses. I think Shellstad's a little shaken up as he trots down the other way. Creighton has missed its last six shots. They trail by one. It looks like a touch for Dante here. He's got to keep moving. Shireman got a hand on it. Rigsby with three to shoot. Rigsby inside. Dante, the offensive board, and the putback. You know, the dribble penetration. Kalkbrenner comes over to help. He loses Dante on the box out. Now they're getting some second shots. 6 0 run for the Ducks. Dante's got 20. Paul Brenner's got to get one up. That's a foul. And it's called on Dante. Dante from Mali went back to Mali last summer for the first time in seven years. He's the youngest of four children. His father died when he was an infant, and all of his NIL money he has sent back home to build a house for his mom. It's unbelievable. First foul on Dante. Alexander rejected by Dante. His second block. He's a force out there. He's been a real force both, both ends this half. Kuznar looks like he's tired. I think it's hard for him to be tired, but that's why they're, they're walking it up now. On this 6-0 run for the Ducks, all six have been scored by Dante. Kuznar for three. It's gone! Take it back. <laughs> he's not tired. 9-0 run and a timeout called by Creighton. He's lulling me to sleep. <laughs> An Oregon team that needed to win the Pac-12 championship to get in the tournament. They beat UCLA, Arizona, and Colorado to win the last Pac-12 tournament title. As Ashworth hits a three, how many times has Creighton scored out of a timeout yeah, tonight? But they are one of the best in the country at that. Final five minutes on a Saturday night in March. It doesn't get any better. Not much different story between Oregon and NC State, huh? You're right. One-on-one. -on -one. Kuznard. Ashworth. Oh, it's a foul on Ashworth. A foul. It's a good call. Shellstad is grabbing his right knee. And then some concern from his teammates as Shellstad is limping. And he's going to come out, take another look at Shellstad inside. Just took a bad yeah. step there. And then Ashworth with the foul. Stepped on his ankle. Oh, yes. Yep. Right ankle. Kwame Evans replaces Shellstad. The next Creighton foul will send the Ducks to the line where they have still yet to attempt a free throw tonight. They were doing pretty good out there with those. Oh, wow. Shireman had his arm around Kuznard's neck. Dante picks it up and misses. Shireman uses the screen, bounces it to Kalkbrenner, comes on in, and he's fouled. That'll be on Evans, the McDonald's All-American. Take a look at the other end of the floor with Shireman and Kuznar. See Shireman right there up high on Kuznar. Oh, man. <laughs> How's that not a foul? 
Two shots. And now Kalkbrenner is at the line. Watch CBS Sports HQ for free. Sports app to watch today. Shellstad is back in there. Good sign for the Ducks. Kalkbrenner makes a pair. The second Creighton player to appear in four NCAA tournaments, tying Kyle Korver's record. One point game, four minutes left. They got Dante down on the block. Dante, not this time, and tipped around to Shireman. Good defense by Kalkburn. It kind of made him fade away a little bit on that shot. Shireman, season opening. Up fake on Dante, out to Miller. Too big. Oh, and a bad pass, but it was last touched by the Ducks against Tennessee. Earlier tonight, the Vols hung on against Texas. This is the 3,680th game in NCAA tournament history. There's only been one game in which a team did not shoot a free throw. Illinois in 1986. The Ducks have not attempted a free throw tonight. They lead by one. Well, the next foul is going to be one and one, so I got to think in three and a half minutes, they're going to get one. You just ruined the stat. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Great back cut. And there's your foul. Courtesy of Steve Lapis. <laughs> All the work we did to find that out. <laughs> yeah, you killed it. Spoiled. It's a great back cut oh, by Macy it's Miller. Great in shooting free throws. It's Oregon. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You got me in my head now. <laughs> Oregon has a shot of free throws. Yes. Mason Miller at the line. Third foul on Evans. And we are tied over to Evan. Guys, in that last timeout for Oregon, Dan Alpin reminding players of time and situation. Timeouts left saying this game's going to come down to defense and rebounding. And Jermaine Kusnard grabbed control of that huddle, telling guys to dig in as a senior in these moments. These are the guys that can taste it and want to keep this dream alive. Well, I know one thing he's going to dig in, that's for sure. <laughs> he doesn't know any other way. One out of two for Miller. Ties it at 58. We've had 11 lead changes and six ties tonight. Kuznard working on Shireman. Kalkbrenner comes over for the block. Great help by Ryan Kalkbrenner. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Ashworth from the free throw line. And Dante skies for his 17th rebound. Can't get a better shot than that, a 12-footer. I think Dana Altman's concerned about Jackson Shellstad, who's still limping a little bit. Well, they're going to run the high pick and roll here. Paul Brennan's coming up. He's not running drop coverage. Now he's going to drop a 2 -way. loss to the Aztecs has been a big part of our season. We've talked about one possession at a time. Big possession here for the Blue Jays. Jackson Shellstead out of the game. Oregon in the zone. They got to keep that movement going like they've been doing all gaming. Maybe get this kid in the lane. Alexander, tough shot off the front of the rim. Tip to Miller. Big rebound from Mason Miller. Jadrian is Keeping Shireman. He is face guarding Baylor Shireman. And Tracy knocks that out of bounds with the shot clock at 11. Boy, you got to see how Jadrian Tracy was guarding Shireman that, that possession. That's why Shellstad is out. They're still working on his right knee. And that is why Brendan Rigsby is on the floor. Showing that zone again. Better watch this guy. Shireman, runner from the baseline, no good. Ashworth dives for the rebound. Evans had it, lost it. Ashworth grabs it, and a tie-up. Ashworth was trying to get a timeout, and the possession arrow favors the Ducks. Greg McDermott not happy with the call as Ashworth dove. It was kicked around, then Ashworth comes up with it, and right here trying to call timeout. I don't know if he ever had possession by himself. Close.
I think there was a, another hand on it the whole time. One thirty-five to play. These guys have to go with the high pick and roll. And test Kalkbrenn on how he's going to guard it. Kuznar to the hoop. Over to Dante again! Dante and Kuznard have scored every point in the second half for Oregon. The lead is four. Shireman. And a tie-up. And this time it'll go to the Blue Jays. Well, this is what happens when you get a drive to the basket. Kalkbrenner comes over trying to help on Kuznard. And nobody's there. Dante might have got away with a little push in the back there. Oregon is outscoring Creighton in the paint, 36 to 14. A two-man show of Kuznard and Dante. Shireman will take a three. No good. Dante with the rebound. They don't have to foul yet. But they got to play some good defense on this possession. And Oregon got to hold it. Let it get down to seven and then go. And just run the pick and roll. Kuznar's been getting in the lane and good things have been happening. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Here, Here comes. goes Kuznar. Dante rolling with him. Kuznar, no. And Shireman the rebound. Greg McDermott says, let's run. Shireman running the length of the floor. And he draws the foul. And Shireman is slow to get up. That was good play by Shireman, just looking to attack. Smart. And he did it quickly, a lot of time didn't go off. He's got to make two, then they're going to have to foul. They got to set up their pressure, which they don't do very often, and then they're going to have to foul because the shot clock's off. Shireman, an 86% free throw shooter. As a team, the Blue Jays are five out of six from the line tonight. I think it's safe to say that Oregon's going to get to the foul line this next <laughs> possession unless Creighton steals it. Oregon has won five straight games. One more would send them to the Sweet 16 in Detroit against Tennessee. And there's a look at who Creighton might want to foul. Dante at just 60%. Well, you know you want to get this into Kuznard's hands. It'll be Evans to inbound. 27.4 on the clock. Shot clock turned oh, off. Foul they get Dante. That's who they wanted. And Dana Altman knows it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you've got to get it into Kuznard in that situation. Or Rigsby, one of those two guys. You get it into a guy who's shooting 60% from the free throw line. In Thursday's win over South Carolina, Dante went 9 of 15 from the line. Here's Dana Altman's reaction. Yeah, I mean, that's that's not a smart play, but they had a freshman taking the ball out of bounds. Kwame Evans is a good player, but he's a freshman. And he just, you know, they tend to panic, and as soon as he saw somebody open, he threw it. First Oregon free throw attempt of the night. It's a one and one. Nope. Dante misses. Kalkbrenner the rebound. Now, these guys got to take it to the basket, but they are one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. Ashworth over to Shireman. Shireman, step back jumper. We are tied! Got plenty of time because Kuznod's got to go to the basket and get to the foul line, but he got to go. Four seconds left. Kuznard, Kuznard drives, puts it up. No good! And for the second time tonight in Pittsburgh, we're going to overtime! What a great shot by Baylor Shireman. I just thought Oregon took too long there. Creighton 1-2 and two in overtime. Oregon 1-0. and oh. How good is this? Oh, it's unbelievable. And still no shell stat, so that right knee continues to be an issue for the freshman. It's Rigsby 
starting the overtime. Kuznard, runner. Yes. 29 for Kuznard. He has been attacking that area the whole second half. And still no one since halftime other than Kuznard and Dante have scored for the Ducks. 30 straight points by those two. That's incredible. You know, Creighton has a big three, and I guess Oregon's big two is <laughs> equal to a big three. Here's Kuznard again, running right to the hoop. Colt Brenner says no. Right though to Dante, great save by Rigsby. Shot clock at four. Dante over Kalkbrenner. And Shireman the rebound. Shireman running. He's got plenty of legs here in OT. Oregon did a good job of getting matched up. Oh, Curl. Shireman. Halfway down and out. And Evans corrals it for the Ducks. Came off that screen hard looking to fire. Kuznard using some clock. What a game. Seven ties, 11 lead changes. Kuznard trapped, trying to find Dante, and Alexander got a hand on it. Yeah, Dante had the smaller guy on him. They forced it into him. Alexander slips. Good defense here by the Ducks. Three minutes to go in OT. Not looking for Kalkbrenner to get a touch at all. Alexander with five in the paint. Out to Ashworth. Deep three. Good! Ashworth lets it fly. Fourteen for the Utah State transfer. And the Blue Jays up by one. And Oregon in, in no hurry right now. But you know what they're going to do. But a Kalkbrenner is now up high looking to hedge. They're going to trap him there. Dante's got it. And a foul is called against Ashworth, who on the other end of the floor let it fly from deep. Yeah, but look at Rigsby. Rigsby's way off of him. He's got to really gotta respect the fact that these guys can shoot threes. Nobody really close to him. And there is Shellstad. Going to the Oregon locker room. You saw the right knee injury late in the second half. Dante hits the free throw. He's got 25 points and 19 rebounds. The 25 ties a career high that he set in the Pac-12 championship game last week against Colorado. That was the first Oregon made free throw of the night, and Dante's got another. Ashworth thought about another. Gets it back from Green. They need to give Shireman a look. Ashworth again off the side of the backboard. Offensive rebound, Kalkbrenner with 10 to shoot. Alexander on the attack. Here's Shireman, defended by Kuznard. Evans out on him as well. Three to shoot. What a pass! Shireman to Kalkbrenner. What a great pass by Shireman. He stepped through that. They doubled him, which I like. That was a good move, but they just gave him enough room to make that pass to Kalkbrenner. Only the first field goal for Kalkbrenner since halftime. Oh, pass. Rigsby couldn't handle it. Bad pass. You know what they're doing now? Very smart. Creighton, they're doubling Kuzinard to get the ball out of his hands. Great move by Greg McDermott. Get somebody else to handle it. Obviously, it's not working out that well. well for Oregon, their third best option is in the locker room. One minute to go. Alexander, what a move. Then he hits. I think now you got to push a little bit. 
You can't play with that thing in half court like you've been doing. Dana Altman calls timeout with 51 seconds on the clock. Shellstad coming back out. We'll see if he can come back in. Kuznard with 29 points. So he has set a Pac-12 record for the most points of any Pac-12 player through their first two tournament games and some elite company he passed. Uh, you think? <laughs> Over to Evan. Yeah, Shellstad, as you can see, guys, back out on the floor. He's got support on that right knee. He did speak with Dana Altman briefly. The decision was to keep him on the bench as of now. Yeah, Rigsby is still out there. All right, let's see what they do now. They're gonna, they're gonna double him again. Here comes Kaltbrenner. Evans. Evans for three. Oh. Air ball, but the follow by Tracy. And wow. finally, someone other than Dante and Kuznard scores for the Ducks. Now, they only have four seconds. You difference. have to foul. There's only four seconds. You've got to foul. You can't leave yourself yeah. for it. Rick B is told to foul, and he does. With 27 seconds left, and Ashworth, a 90% free throw shooter. <laughs> Tracy does a good job there. Ashworth doesn't box him out. Ashworth money at the line. Oregon only has six threes tonight, and they have not made one in the last nine and a half minutes. Oh! They have enough time to take a quick two, but they got to go. If they get an open three, that's fine. But they got to go. Tracy nearly lost it. 20 seconds left. Kuznar puts up a three. Wow. Bang! Oh, my goodness. Timeout, Oregon. My goodness. Kuznar with stones in Pittsburgh. 32 for Kuznard, and we're tied. I mean, Shireman's on. Maybe he should have had his hand up earlier, but that's, that's a tough shot and a pretty good shot. His sixth three-pointer of the night his mom, Raven, and his entire family all pumped up. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're getting into it here, too. What a scene here in Pittsburgh. But now, 17 seconds left. Keep in mind, last game of the regular season, Trey Alexander hit at the buzzer for Creighton to win at Villanova. They can take the last shot here. They need to take it with, like, five seconds to go, so there's enough time. They've been offensive rebounding the whole game, not as well in the second half. Leave yourself enough time to get a second shot and get the ball into Shireman's hands. He is the most, he's the guy, him or Trey Alexander, the two guys that can do something off the dribble on their own. And they're going to a 1-4 here, low. It looks like a two-man game between Shireman and Trey Alexander. Five seconds left, Alexander with the ball. Goes. Two seconds left, poked away. Alexander at the horn, no! He hit the game winner at Nova, but not tonight. And we're going to double overtime in Pittsburgh. Playing tons of minutes. Kalkbrenner wins the tip. And still no player with four fouls. And still no Shellstad, not able to come back in for the Ducks. Rigsby is out there. Oregon sticking with this matchup, switching. Now it's a switching man to man. Ashworth breaks free. Evans the rebound. Kuznard has 32 on the heels of his career high 40 against South Carolina on Thursday. I think Dana Allman is doing this because he wants to uh, conserve his guys' energy, no doubt. Because they've done it for the last, last five, seven minutes. Dante had it poked away. Evans is there, four on the shot clock. But Evans stepped out of bounds. Another look. Yeah, he, there he to, is. He needed to gather this and just get it out. Evans is scoreless tonight. He's 0 for 3. Defense! Defense! 
It seems Ashworth is ending up with the best, most open shots for a while now. Alexander tied up inside, gets rid of it to Ashworth. There he is. Boom! They've been leaving him open. That's his fifth three of the night. Kuznar, high arcing rainbow, no. Green the rebound. Green has done a good job on the glass. Ashworth has scored 19 tonight, 16 since halftime. And Greg McDermott decided to go with two big guys instead of the four guards. Or four perimeter players, I should say. No Farabello, no Mason Miller. Wow. Oh, Another yeah. one! Kalkbrenner from distance. The 14-3 of the night for the Blue Jays. Kuznard on the attack, off glass, rolls around and out. And Greg McDermott says, let's slow down with 2.50 to go. Maybe getting a little tired, Kuznard. He usually finishes all of those. I think he's a little tired. Alexander, what a move, misses Green! Jason Green rim rocking! He's giving them a big lift. I think they gotta move, go a little faster now. Dane Altman is telling them. That stuff before that you were doing, you're down eight. Kuznar, deep three, no good. Rebound for Alexander. And the Ducks, with two minutes to go in double OT, are in trouble. A scoring drought approaching two minutes. And a whistle and a foul with just six seconds on the shot clock. An 8-0 run by the Blue Jays. Well, Creighton here. Ashworth does a good job of making himself available when Trey Alexander was in trouble and then called for him, they, they leave him alone, which you can understand. I mean, he's the guy, let it not let him shoot it, but if he's going to shoot it, okay. And then Green with the great follow up there. Jason Green, the Omaha native, has been a huge spark off the bench for the Blue Jays. Four points, but nine rebounds and there is some blood on the court. Dante's lip is cut. And you know, Mason Miller and Farabello and Trout, they really didn't do anything. So put him in, at least he's going to bang and get rebounds, and that's what he's done. And remember, at halftime with Evan Washburn, Greg McDermott pointed out the play of Jason Green in the first half, and he has carried that over the rest of the night. A reminder that Tennessee waits in the wings in Detroit in the Sweet 16. You know, we sat with Greg McDermott for a while yesterday, and his team is all business. He said, we know what to expect, and 100% of our focus is on basketball and winning. Yes, it's experience, but it's also who these players are. And he said, we have no drama, no off-the-court issues. He said, we walked into the arena the other night for the first round like it was a January road game at Seton Hall. And they have not been phased tonight with everything that Oregon has thrown at them. Alexander and Shireman have not come out the entire night, and Kalkbrenner has sat for a grand total of 27 seconds. You know, and it's, it's tough for Dana Altman and Oregon when you play eight guys and four that didn't score. And one of them got hurt. And one got hurt. So I, the one guy who did score at seven points is not playing anymore. So they've been playing basically with two guys. A ten-point game. Rigsby for three. And it's tracked down in the corner by Tracy. Kuznard, catch and shoot triple. Short. Way short. Out of bounds. And the Ducks are running out of gas. Yeah, I think his legs are gone. Heroic game by Kuznard and Dante. But not enough.
At least it doesn't look that way. A foul with 1.22 to go. Kuznard and Dante have scored 58 of the 71 for the Ducks. You know, you look back, that one and one that Dante missed at the end Huge. of regulation, that was their chance. They needed to do it then, and they didn't do it. Creighton, 12 of 13 at the free throw line tonight. For this season, they shoot 78% from the line, which is top 15 in the country. They dodged a major bullet. Kuznar puts up a three over Shireman off the mark. Tipped right to Alexander. They're not going to foul. And Dana Altman's looking at the clock. I thought the move by Greg McDermott to trap Kuznar on the high pick and roll was brilliant. A brilliant move and a big turning point in the game. Chance of CU for the Creighton fans here in Pittsburgh. And you know what, Andrew? A lot of times... When a team oh, Alexander, the bank open after midnight in Pittsburgh. A lot of times when a team dodges a bullet in the NCAA tournament, just let him go, go foul. 34 seconds left. I understand your point. You survive a lot of here. A lot of teams, when you dodge a bullet in the NCAA tournament, you survive, especially a good team like this, that really, in a lot of ways, I'm... They should have. They could have lost very easily if Dante makes that one free throw. Those t those teams sometimes they go on and win the whole thing. I've seen it, and, and this team is capable. And this team remembers the pain of the San Diego State loss in the Elite Eight a year ago. That's the first point of double overtime for Oregon. They had been outscored 15-0 to begin this second session. If they could get just a little bit from their bench when they need it, this team could win it all. And they don't need a lot, because they don't foul. And Greg McDermott told us that with longer timeouts in the NCAA tournament, the timeouts are a minute longer, he doesn't have to play as many of his bench players. He feels confident with his starting five being able to hang in there and go the distance, which tonight covered two overtimes. So for Greg McDermott, this will be his 325th win at Creighton. Two behind the all-time leader. That's Dana Altman. Two coaches in the last 30 years at Creighton. Two incredible head men. Tremendous guys and tremendous coaches with a great respect for each other. I would imagine it'll be a pretty emotional handshake here dana altman will be rooting for creighton but right now it's the blue jays moving on to the sweet 16. second straight year in the sweet 16 and the third time in the last four seasons for creighton and in the end, as much as they struggled to make those open threes, they shot 38% for the game and made 15 of them.